So welcome to another 4G WE and TMC tele telecast. And I'm here with Fred Kimmerer, who is the CTO and EVP of GenBan. So uh, first of all, uh, tell us a little bit about what's been going on with GenBan. What, what, are your, what are your customers looking for you now? I think of you guys as being kind of leaders in the session controller world, but I'm sure there's more to it than that. So what's going on right now? Right, sure. So uh, GenBand has, for a long uh, period of time, as you mentioned, um, been a leader in uh, gateway technology. Um, we're very, very widely deployed across the world um, in both fixed and mobile networks, the next generation cores and so on. Um, we've been typically uh, number one or two share leader in almost all the segments we participate in now for over a year and a half, and we've grown very, very rapidly. Um, our customers are very interested in evolving their networks to an all IP content centric world um, and uh, they're counting on us to provide technology that will help them do that evolution in a very smooth and investment protection based manner. Okay, and, and what's the overall transition? Is it more mobility? Is it more bandwidth for video? What's, where are they driving? Yeah, from? there's really a couple trends. I think you hit on a number of the major ones. Um, on the consumer side, the game is rapidly becoming about mobile and uh, broadband access and also mobile broadband access, putting the two together is also extremely important. We've seen some just amazing statistics since we've had uh, kind of the smartphone revolution hit the market over the last two years. You know, we've seen um, some, one smartphone manufacturer, for example, go to almost a billion downloads and then uh, actually almost double that within a quarter. Um, we've seen uh, an explosion of content delivery over the internet and the internet becoming a tool for entertainment video, very important trend. And we've also seen in the midst of this a real strong desire to uh, reinvest and revitalize the voice cores and get them ready for fixed mobile convergence and content centric services. So a lot of moving pieces for our customers to deal with all at once and it makes it a very challenging uh, problem for them to invest in infrastructure that will carry them through all of that uncertainty and provide good investment protection for them as all this change goes on. Okay, so let's let's you keep bringing up the investment side. So where are you investing? What's the where do you spend your time thinking about it? it I think you guys have had, having some of your own chipsets, but what else are you what else is Yeah, we're actually over? investing in sort of two directions at once. We're we're spending a lot of money to develop some brand new pure IP platforms. Um, we've announced two new products in the last year, both of them based on ATCR S2 and S9, a high density session border control platform, and also a high scale, uh, what what the industry calls security gateway, which is the uh, point in the network that will terminate Fento cells and Wi-Fi access for mobile devices. Those are both big new initiatives. We're also investing heavily in some of the technologies that will enable this IP transition, things like session border controllers, um, high-scale encryption platforms. We're looking at traffic management tools like deep packet inspection, as well as how we can combine these technologies together to create new applications and new services like multimedia transcoding. Well, okay, so let's, let's take that. I'm assuming that that's happening towards, towards that security function where you're doing the front-end processing towards the HSS, or are we in the core over by where the... Uh, Network operators got the tandems and those kind of right. Yeah, it's more. These are more core functions. GenBand's strength has always been inside the core of the network and at the the boundaries, the sort of gateway points that, that surround it. Um, the multimedia transcoding is a is a great example of this. Based on our historical expertise in media gateways, which is really all about high density application of coding to interwork IP traffic to the uh, PSTN or TDM world of uh, the existing phone network. We've taken that expertise and leveraged some of these new platform investments that I'm talking about to build a very high density, flexible solution for providing these kinds of services in the all IP world. Mm -hmm. So for example, um, when uh, we have a world where more and more of the end users are talking to each other on mobile no phones within the same network, which many of the providers' plans have been encouraging, you less and less need to jump onto the PSTN and to, uh, through a normal media gateway um, to uh, complete those calls. So what we've done is we've basically allowed our customers who have invested in our platforms to redeploy those as centralized transcoders, only take the calls or the sessions in the case of video um, through those devices when it's necessary. And we're now extending that to include applications like adapting content from the internet that might be designed for a large screen TV 
to things like mobile devices. So that's kind of how we've, one example of how we've uh, provided investment protection during the evolution to an all IP world. So, so back in the early days of GenBan, you guys were actually kind of um, edge um, controller type services and that kind of functionality. Is there a logical transition from that world to the femtocell, or is there a difference there? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, we actually found the femtocell market through our media gateway position initially. Um, GenBand was very heavily involved in the early market stages, maybe a year and a half ago, of simply adapting the IP world of femtocells to existing ATM and TDM cores that the mobile operators were trying to con you know, operate their early trials off of. With our acquisition of NextPoint Networks, we expanded our presence to include a high-scale IP encryption platform that also now enables us to complete more of the home node B gateway solution that looks to be the, uh, the thing the carriers are going to want for large-scale deployment of this stuff. Again, on our basic theme of handling all of the boundaries of the network as well as the internal media and signaling pieces, that was a very natural fit for us. So let me ask you one more question about the transcoding stuff, and, and that is specifically, um, right now we've got a plethora of codecs that are kind of chasing us in the marketplace. Yep. Is there um, any consolidation, any, any dominance? Is H.264 um, becoming a kind of a video functionality, and what are you looking at for yeah, that great kind of question. functionality? Actually, um, I think the, the situation on codecs is just changing. It's not actually getting simpler or more complicated. It's just changing. So you do have, for example, in the mobile world, the current generation codecs tend to be centering around a handful of codecs, so that's helping. But at the same time, internet content is becoming a much bigger part of the carriage on networks, and there's a tremendous variation in the wrapper formats, the coding schemes, the screen formats, and all sorts of new issues that come with that. This is actually very good for GenBand. Our fundamental strength, or one of them, has always been high density very flexible transcoding. You know, we pretty much do every codec in, in the industry. We've even um, recently implemented things like satellite codecs for the, some of the new generation of satellite phones that are uh, coming onto the market. So we, that is that essentially that whole codec um, ongoing evolutionary process really plays to one of our best strengths, I think. Good. So Fred, if people wanted to find out more about GenBan, how would they do that? Uh, we, they can uh, contact us through our website, www.genban.com or uh, contact us through our headquarters in Plano, Texas. Excellent. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Really appreciate it. Thank you.